Hey, how you doing, brothers and sisters? I just want to give a, a recap of a Facebook Live that I did over the weekend, Saturday to be exact, where I spoke about Andy Byford coming to Michael J. Um, Scarry, um, Mother Clara Hell Depot. And um, he seemed genuinely interested in what the going-ons was and, and Mother Clara Hell and, and the, the, the greenness of the depot. And, uh, you know, Andy Byford... Um, walked around and with general genuine interest in and, uh, and uh, myself and uh, uh, Ronaldo Rios the chairman of Mother Clara Hell went around with with the group of men and uh, showed the NYCT president around the facility um, we also spoke about my truth may not be your truth it doesn't mean what I'm saying isn't true and that's basically in reference of a lot of the rhetoric that goes on on social media. And um, you got a lot of new cats on there and they're expressing themselves, which, you know, you're, you're, it's your God-given right to express yourself. But um, let me just make myself clear. You know, when I tell a story about our collective bargaining agreement, how we got there and, and the whole nine yards, you know, that's my truth. And, and for you to or for anybody to try to contradict my truth that's your right um but it doesn't mean that what i'm saying isn't true and that's what you got to be careful about you know people would experience you know such as myself i can tell you a story about a situation and i can articulate it in the way that it really went down where someone could tell you a story that just isn't true and then you believe that truth that's your right to believe that truth but it doesn't mean that my truth isn't the truth. It is the truth. And, um, you know, moving along, we was talking about Tony Utano. And uh, he's the president of Local 100 since Samuelson got elected to the international TWU. Um, so far, I like to, you know, report that Tony Utano is doing an excellent job. And I, you know, appreciate that kind of... Um, leadership that goes around to the membership and shake hands and and sit down and talk with the membership you know he's not a person that talks at the membership he's a person that talks to and with the membership and so far i kind of you know like that i like that i enjoy that um most of our fight is basically the same old fight it's just that now the technology is starting to change so being that the technology has changed our fight is a little bit different because we're fighting the technology now but it's still the same old fight and we got to be careful because transit and the mta as a whole they will try to implement things of the past of, of past fights right so we have to be mindful that the, that some of these fights that are coming up are fights that that um were always going on it's now they have the technology in place and trying to do certain things so we have to be creative in fighting back on some of those uh, technological fights. So basically it's the same old fight. Um, the other thing we discussed is, is their racism in New York City Transit. And to my knowledge and to my conclusion, I would have to say that there is definitely a racism going on in New York City Transit. And particularly um, a tr the department I represent is traffic checking operations. And the traffic checking operations are subject to all types of racism. Um, one, based on the salary that they make, they are the lower, lower of, um, end of the of what they make. So, they 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 get looked at as someone that's beneath somebody else. Then you have a lot of black and Latino um, supervision, and then managers that's appointed by you know, all intent purposes is appointed by a white guy. And the white guy basically tells the the black managers, the Latino managers on how to discipline the the workers and and basically hold themselves back and say, Look, I, it's not me, it's them. So it's like all it's it's sort of like black on black crime, but it's it's, you know, led by a a white guy who who maybe don't want to be directly involved and then lets others do his dirty work and that's what i'm seeing since i've been in the department um 
Um, there's a lot of nepotism over there too. People who um, get promoted to jobs, they get they, there's no qualifications and there's no there's no real merits on how to be promoted to that job. What 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 actually occurs, what actually occurs is that um, the the boss appoints where they want to appoint and 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 it's no nece necessarily merits involved and there's really we don't never see no job posting that goes on out there. So, you know, that's why um, I have to come to the conclusion that there's, there's nepotism and it's not done on based on your merits. I think it's a big EEO violation, if you ask me. Um, MTA bus and why, um, why do they have a different operations planning than Map Store and New York City Transit? I think if you want to be totally, totally transparent, <clears throat> you put all the, all the bus people in the room, and and we can maybe do service better. But but because it's not transparent that way, we believe that they try to do something to to one department, which is MTA bus, and they try to do something totally different with Map Store and New York City Transit. Um, being that they're under the same MTA umbrella, they should be in the same operations planning meeting. And I also believe that the ATU local 726 and the ATU local 1056 should also be in the same operations planning as um, New York City Transit and Map Store because it if it has an, an a cause and effect of everybody and and some some of that stuff is where the money is allocated and when they have shuttle works going on and and there's a there's a lot of blindfolding of one on, on one union where it, there's one aspect where everybody could see what's going on. It's kind of ridiculous to me, but that's what it, that's what it is. That's that's what that's that's the convoluted MTA. Um, also, spoke about being wrong and strong. Now I gotta caution my members, you know, and not even if I represent you, but anybody. If you're wrong about a situation, it's not it's best for you not to be strong about it you you can't be wrong and strong and, and and what do i mean by wrong and strong like what i mean is you do basically something totally outlandishly wrong and then you're talking major shit um you're talking like oh what was me and and being very public about it where where management is doing something very wrong or the union is doing something very wrong my suggestion in a in a case about being wrong, you, especially some major wrong, you, you humble yourself and let the union do their job, and represent you, represent you to make sure that we can keep you employed in this company. And that's basically what I mean by being wrong and strong. If you're wrong and strong, and then it gets to the point of termination, very hard to get a person back. If you're wrong and strong, you got to be humble. Be humble. Um. And finally, in closing, we we spoke about end of year elections, politics, and the smear the smear campaign. Um, it it is what it is. The elections are the elections. They're coming. Um, smearing shouldn't go on. It does go on. It does happen. Unfortunately, if I would be one to to say that we shouldn't be getting personal downright personal talking about people's families and whatnot that's not really what we should be doing you know you want to write you want to run for an office run on your merits um if it if it's debating that needs to be going on then you debate or write it on your flyer what you can do better than the other candidate and re and remember you know experience at the end of the day matters about everything all right um and that's what i'm going to close on um, have a wonderful day. Peace out.